This is DJ. This is Ish. And this is Pero, Pero Let, Let Me, Me Tell, Tell You. you. Dale. Are you ready? Yeah. Oíste que... I think I told you que este año hay pocos abuelitos, ¿no? Yeah, you told me que hay un shortage con Amazon. Amazon bought a, a large supply of uh, Christmas trees. Uh -huh. um, and as a result, m you know, mostly, like, the biggest vendors had less supply. And on top of that, Christmas trees, when you buy them, are 8 to 10 years old. So, so the ones that you're buying now were planted between 2008 and 2010, and that was during the recession. So a lot of these farms were not yeah. making as much money, so they, they had less back. crop. Right. They planted less crop, and that's why yo fui a como cinco o seis lugares para buscar un abuelito. I couldn't find one, so I had to go to the iglesia on Bird Road and 107th, alante de Walgreens and Checkers. Okay, yeah, yeah. Y, and I paid 100 when it was 130 and I negotiated with the guy for 110 but also you have to go to Target and buy uno artificial and then just hang a little air freshener from the car. No, but I like, them, I like them real. I've been using my little pipe cleaner now for about five years. You put on a candle and call it a day. Hells yeah. So, are we recording? We are. So here we are in episode 44. 44. 44. So what are we doing for our 100th episode? Let's throw a party. A slumber party? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Brittany. Calm down, Brittany. Um, you're, you'll do your domination <laughs> dominatrix next year. That's so, right. how's the holidays treating everyone? I hope everyone's treating them good. You know, it's a little crazy now. Mm -hmm. End of year. Just like todo con la locura, con la en las tiendas comprando. But it's also like, oh my god, I'm gaining weight, and everybody's mm -hmm. like making resolutions that nobody's going to keep anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, then in January, gimnasio se llena. Ugh, it's so insufferable, especially because I go to the one here by where we record. Uh -huh. That's already the size of this office where we record. <laughs> and um, <sighs> and those people who order your gifts from Amazon, beware, porque the Amazon box snatchers están out. Están en full force. You, you know what I think is great? that This th episode is sponsored by Nest, the <laughs> camera that will let you see. The your Amazon <laughs> box snatchers, they come in all sizes and colors and races. Yeah. It, it's really like an uh, equal opportunity robber. Yeah. <laughs> like, the other day, they were like... It's they, nice when we don't need affirmative action. They put action it on Channel that. 6, and it was like this middle-aged blonde woman. Like, she was probably in her 60s. In like 60s? A in like a business suit. Y a lo descarado, she walked to the store. And took and, the I'm sorry, to the, to the front de uh, uh -huh. door. And she took them. Because you always think it's the youngins, you know? See, the, the, ju oh. the juveniles. Yes, the, it's the, the kids. The kids. The whippersnappers. The whippersnappers who are out there, you know, stealing these packages. Oh, oh you know. Oh, un delincuente. That was the teenager. That nope. was, you know, nope. In no, this no, case, no. it was Marjorie. It was Marjorie. On the way home from her realtor job. Yep. On the way to public, she was like, let me snatch a couple of she Amazon. Was, yep. She was snatching patches, yep. packages so, and wigs. So people, keep those boxes safe. So yep, yep, yep. anyway, um... To our regularly scheduling, scheduled programming. <laughs> Isn't um, this our regularly scheduled programming? Well, anyway? you know, that's <laughs> true. That is true. So, obviously, we can't um, end this week without talking about the passing of 41, George H.W. Bush. Yeah, you have to clarify because we just said we're episode 44. So, you don't want... <laughs> the passing of 41, not <laughs> right, episode 41. Right. The 41st president of the United States, yep. which really is the 40th. Wait, what? Haven't I told you this? Okay, this is our listen, laugh, and this is this our is listen and the listen, laugh, laugh, and learn. This is definitely the learn. So, the gentleman in the White House right now is the what forty sixth president? Um, forty five, no? Forty five, yes, the forty fifth president. He is Why the, can't we get our numbers? He is the forty. No, tenemos una trocadera. <laughs> trocadera. That's a great That's word. Que trocadera. Um, <laughs> he is the forty fifth president, but really, he's the forty fourth. Mm -hmm person to hold a job because they count the pr presidencies of Grover Cleveland which I believe was the 21st oh, and the 23rd okay, okay, as correct. two separate presidencies. But he's the same person. He is the same person, right. but he, he was president for four years. He lost the re-election. Somebody else was president. And then he became president after that. So you could So he had say two non-successive terms. So you could say Grover Cleveland was near the presidency then far. far. And then the near. Oh. So he, yeah, he was, I believe, the 21st and the 23rd. Okay. So there's been 45 presidencies, but 44 presidents. presidents. 
Yeah, I did not know that. Viste eso, viste eso. You're so full of facts. So, yeah, that, yeah that's who I am. <laughs> well, no, there are worse things to be. <laughs> Listen, if I have to pick between full of shit and full of facts. Remember, as that <laughs> reviewer said, who we don't know who it is, I'm the... You're the comic relief yeah. and I'm the, in, the intellectual. intellectual. As yeah. you said, wouldn't it be funny if it was if she met the other way around? Why do I know? Why do I think it's a woman? Anyway, it doesn't matter. So, um, so the passing of George uh, H. H. W. Bush, and um, you know, I think that any time a president or somebody, a, a leader, somebody who's like obviously very relevant mm-hmm. at one point mm-hmm. passes people always pay them praises and and things like that so i guess what the, the topic of discussion is you know you can go to any presidency mm-hmm. and and pick apart a lot of things that they did wrong you're never going to agree 100 percent, right like george bush 41 in particular you know something he gets criticized a lot for was that he was very slow on the AIDS epidemic, he wasn't that Reagan. It was Reagan, but Bush didn't follow up. Yeah, um, and okay. Bush still had very much of a, a, a kind of following the policies. If yeah, you okay. if you would, and okay. he still had a very antiquated um, notion that it was all based on behavior, which we know it can be based on behavior. But he thought that this is solved by curtailing the behavior, which obviously. Mm-hmm. Tell that to somebody who's dying of AIDS, you know, right? right. right? Um, so he had a, a bit of antiquated thoughts on that. Um, he ca- eventually came around. Uh, but, you know, like any presidency, he had, you know, he had obviously a lot of things that he did very well. And then mm-hmm. things that are a little bit more controversial that looking back on could have handled been handled very differently. So what do you think about that? Do you think that we should sing somebody complete praises or, you know... Especially somebody like him. I was going to say, I think it depends on the person. Um, Because, you know, Hitler dies. I don't think the first thing you should lead with is, he was a great artist. Um, You know what I mean? In a situation like this, unless we're talking about a president who went out of his way to do things that were harmful. Be an asshole. Right. I think it's fair to start off saying, you know, it was a problematic presidency. However... He always did this. You know what I mean? Right. To try and put the positive spin on it. Because ultimately, I do think at the end of the day, unless we're talking about, like I said, somebody who purposely goes out of their way to do harm to someone. Right. Or, or some, is reckless. Or, or an ideal or is reckless. None of us is perfect. Right. And nobody, you know, let... I mean, I'm not a biblical person, but, you know, let him without sin cast the first stone, right? Like. Mm-hmm. Nobody's perfect. Nobody knows what they're doing 100% of the time. Sometimes after we do things, in hindsight, we're like, shit. Either I could have done that Well, and I, and I also think different. that in hindsight, everything's 2020. Oh, and, it's easy to criticize. And, and that's something that we're going to get into in the next topic we're going to talk yes, about. Yes. You know, it, it's very easy to ju- judge someone, in our case, from 2018 eyes. Right. And say, this is what you should have done. Um, you know, he, for example, and I mean, I've made no... Um, secret that i'm a liberal and i've always been a democrat but you know somebody like him i mean he was in the military he was shot down yeah yeah. um he then was sort of in the mccain model i think sort of sort of he wasn't a prisoner of war but he he was shot down i mean he served his country he he served his country um he really felt a sense of country he was director of the cia Mm -hmm. he was in congress he was an ambassador he was vice president, and then he was president, and he really believed in public service yeah. and in public duty. So I think these are the important things to remember about the person. Right. I think that then you could be maybe a critical about the administration or about policies. his policies as president. I don't disagree, but I, I think that in a case like this, especially with with someone who had such um, you know immense duty you know sense of duty to his country and served more than any of us could ever oh, imagine yeah. He's serving the last president that served correct um because after him it was clinton yeah no, yeah he was well bush his son was in the military but he was never de- deployed okay. to any um theater to any okay. any war um or any conflict um but I mean, he's considered. I mean, he's of the great generation. He was a World War II veteran, so I mean, I, I think that it's very easy to 
fall in the political hole and and say well you know he, he should have he should have been more receptive to the you know aid crisis and to you know the gay community and to this and all that is true all of that is very true um you know he got us into this war and you know war is very tricky you yeah. know um th those are all things that are very true and very valid arguments but i just think that again the man i mean he 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 did for this country more than any of us would ever yeah. could ever dream of doing yeah, you know absolutely. and we're talking about public service so i for that i commend him um obviously we could talk about his policies but as again, president you can, at another time but for that i commend him you can disagree with a person's opinions but still respect who they tried to be right and i've said this like for example to you many times in conversation his son George W. Mm. Bush. I mean, I used to want to throw a rock at the window. <laughs> you know, I, you know, I wanted to like break things because of how angry he would get me. Which, in hindsight, I, <laughs> it's like George W. Bush run for president years. again. Please, please, please. <laughs> what is it? You don't know how. You don't yeah. know what you got till it's gone. I mean, compared to what we have now. But anyway, um, but you know what? I never. I never thought George W. Bush was a bad guy. I right, always, right. I always thought he was probably a sweet person who just I disagreed with a lot politically, right? And you know, was very critical on the way he handled a lot of things. But then again, I think that we both can separate the man or the person from the politics. But unfortunately, <laughs> that doesn't happen That's nowadays. Not the case nowadays. Nowadays, so yeah. Hats um, off to, to 41 and you know. Oh, and before we, go, before we go to the next topic, how beautiful was his dog? Yeah, that was oh, really I sweet. I cried with that little dog. What that was really dog. sweet. That was really yeah, sweet. Sully, but right? I, yeah, I, but I think the whole thing that like, you know, Barbara Bush died earlier this year and they were so in love until the very end yeah. and all that, I mean, Listen, there's never a right way to go, but if there is a right way to go, um, I, I think they probably... Yeah. Because that from what I know of, you know, neither of them had... I mean, I know that he was kind of disabled now towards the end and all that. Malito, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, they both lived a long and but prosperous he was life. He was 94? So, I mean... Listen, I, I, I forgot how, how old she was, but she was probably up there I'm as well. Not the same age, but I mean, again, if any of us gets to be that age, chances are que no vamos a estar como un titi de 20 años. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Unless you're Jane Fonda. That's Because Jane Fonda's 20 and she could kick the ass of any 25-year-old. That's true. So no, Rita Moreno. Rita Moreno's the same age as my grandmother. Yeah. And Rita Moreno looks like she could probably outdance me. Yeah. Yeah, she probably could. She probably could. So, anyway. But on the, on the topic of things that in hindsight Ay, are mio. easy to criticize. Get ready for this one. <laughs> well, if something tells me that boy, uh, when I bring this up, the <laughs> way I gasolina uh, fuego. I almost wish you hadn't told me ahead of time. So, so <laughs> as many of our listeners have probably heard, now that the holidays are coming up and mm -hmm. holiday music mm -hmm. makes its comeback, and Mariah Carey is a queen of Christmas. <laughs> That's true. Among the many songs that are, I would say, in the American song, songbook of Christmas classics yes. is Baby It's Cold Outside. Yeah. Which is having a not-so-great year. This, year. And so, we actually discussed that on Mount Geekmore, which yes. is currently uh, live. Yes. So now we're bringing it to our own podcast, yep. but let me tell you. Yeah. And if you haven't listened to Mount Geekmore, check, we it are, out. I, check it out. Not only is it part of the Geek Bro Network, which we're a part of, but we are on um, their show this Down week. Show, yeah, we talk about um, our four favorite Christmas movies. Yes. Yeah. So we'll put the links in our, our Instagram. So. Yeah. So basically, in this era now of Me Too, of the Me Too movement, um, it's, it's beyond that. It's, well, but, it's but, but, PC but right, but, but in this era now of the Me Too movement, I mean, I'm setting up the issue here. Okay, in okay. this era now of the Me Too movement, things that were at one point, you know, passed and at one point were Inocuous, not a big deal, now are deemed inappropriate. And I think that obviously some things uh, probably do have a a 
a um, problematic problematic because like for example I'm a huge huge as people close to me know I'm a huge Bond head I'm I'm a, I'm obsessed with the James Bond franchise mm -hmm. and even I look at those Sean Connery movies and I'm like coño <laughs> I was like man he's treating that woman like a piece of meat like 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 coño this would not fly today no but you see it obviously through, through the those perspective lenses. that those movies were in the early 60s and. Right. And it was a different time. Whatever. Um, but this song now, Baby It's Cold Outside, is, uh, it's been removed from a since, well, it started that, uh, I don't know if it was, every article I've read, it, it sounded like it was one listener, but somebody complained about the song. station, I believe. Somebody complained about the song to a Cincinnati station. Yes, yes. And it was not WKRP in Cincinnati. Lonnie Anderson wouldn't care. Yeah, right? Yeah. You know her and Bert used to. They probably did that like during the holidays in their in their orange groves here in Florida. <laughs> you know they would sit instead of apple cider, it was just you know, juguito de naranja, un juguito de naranja with some vodka. So you know, obviously one of the one of the most controversial lyrics in the song is "What's in this drink?" Right. Right. So you know, date rape, which is a very serious issue. Which is a very serious issue. So. The topic of conversation, you know. Also, is this in she, a, she literally could just be asking. Like, I've asked many times, hey, what's in this drink? Right. So, <laughs> the topic of conversation, is it inappropriate? Is it, you know, what it, are people reading too much into it? Are you being too PC? What What are your thoughts on it? Oh, I think you know my thoughts on this. Are people being too PC? Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I think ultimately what it comes down to is... It's about context. And I think, again, we went over this a little bit in, in Mount Geekmore. You know, at that time, you know, and again, this this song actually, I believe, was written by a husband and wife. In 1944. Baby, it's called us. I think yeah. it was written by a husband and wife. Yeah. So, again, um, a woman contributed. Hmm, omitted that part. But, um, you know... In the context of the time, I think, you know, women were expected to play hard to get women. I'm not saying that was necessarily the case, but I'm just saying you can't just brush over everything with the same stroke and say like no no this is exactly what it is i know exactly what they intended there's only one interpretation to this and i'm right you're wrong it's horrible men are raping women it's like it's like uh, what's his name antoine dodson you know, oh my god they, you know, they <laughs> they're they're here. Here. yeah you know it's not it, it it can't just be that and i think you know i'm gonna i'm gonna pivot a little bit here um because i'm looking at, at the papers that you've got there another victim of this hypersensitive, I'm triggered. Um, which, I mean, if you're triggered, pull it. <laughs> um, the Little Mermaids kiss the girl. Anthem. No, not the Little Mermaid. <sighs> Apparently, there's an acapella group that has decided not to sing it because it's problematic. Well, no, they were going to sing it, but right, but they but they decided not to. So I'm gonna I'm gonna quote this because okay, I don't want to I don't want to. I don't want to. You know, there are certain things that I don't read too much because I know coming up, I'm God. Right. So there was this. Um, I, I don't know if she's on the newspaper staff, but it, this girl called Noah uh, Wallstein from Princeton University, and she wrote an op-ed on "Kiss a Girl" from The Little Mermaid. Mm -hmm. um, na 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 na. Don't be shy. You wanna kiss the girl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, for those of you who don't know, this is the scene in The Little Mermaid after Ariel has given up her voice to get legs, as everyone does. And she's in the rowboat with Prince Eric. Now, she cannot speak, but in order for her to break the curse, she does have to get true love's kiss. Hey, Ryan, I think everybody knows that scene. I don't know who's listening. And whoever hasn't seen The Little Mermaid, bueno, you're, it's your loss. Pero, I assume that. Bueno, this woman wrote that... Um, there was a millennial today told me she didn't know what Top Gun was. So, yeah, but Little Mermaid is different. Um, so, in a male a cappella group uh, in Princeton was going to sing this song as part of their holiday, uh, I guess, show. Uh, and she wrote an op ed and asked them not to sing it because she said, and quote, Despite the fact that an evil sea witch cursed Ariel's voice away, making verbal consent impossible. The song is clearly problematic from the get-go. The lyrics, quote, It's possible she wants you to. There's one way to ask her. It don't take a word, not a single word. Go on and kiss, kiss the, the girl. girl. So pretty much she's saying that Eric wants his way with Ariel, whether Ariel wants to or not. And you know what? Me too. Time's up, Eric. Okay, you Eric, know what? you violate her. You know what? 
Fun. And here I was, oh. Eric. I, I liked you. I thought you were one of the nicer, you know, princes. Never, never trust anybody who, who wears uh, that deep of a V collar. Wait, that's me. Um, no. Oh, oh, listen. I, oh, listen, I'm sorry. The song, this quote is great. I got way too excited. So, so she said, it encourages men to make physical advances on women without obtaining clear consent. Quote, this is what she said. The song launches a heteronormative attack oh, on yeah. a woman's right to oppose the romantic and sexual liberties taken by men. I, In trying to motivate Eric to kiss oh, Ariel, the crab Sebastian uses <laughs> lines such as looks. Look like the boy's too shy. <laughs> Se me está subiendo la presión. Okay. Okay. Here's, here's my biggest issue with this. My biggest issue with this. Every song in a musical, okay, is written not in a vacuum, but as part of a story and to advance the plot. Now, anybody with two eyes that isn't a fucktard can see in the movie... She is trying to get him to understand that she wants to kiss him. But she cannot, as Miss I Have Opinions About Things Like Toast said, well, because the whole, thing was, it. the whole thing was that she was supposed to have him fall in love with her without using her voice. Right. She can't, <laughs> that she was can't the whole verbalize spell. <laughs> it, but she wants him to kiss her. You watch the entire scene. The whole scene is her leaning in, trying to go in, trying to open her eyes, like puckering up. That's not consent. And let's not forget that she had her looks, her pretty face. Uh, oh, and don't underestimate the body language. body language. I mean, hello. <laughs> but again, this song doesn't... I'm just, I'm just so Okay, upset. so look. I'm, I'm just so upset. Because this song doesn't exist in a vacuum. This song, within the context of the movie, is not about take advantage of the bitch. You know, it's about she can't say it. But take she, advantage of the bitch on a canoe. She has nowhere to go. You're all by yourself. The animals aren't going to talk. <laughs> You know, no, it's not the Natalie Wood story. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah, I can't believe you said that. Anyway, um, oh, by the way, you know what What other song is in, in the blacklist of songs that are inappropriate? Half Breed by Cher. You know what? And Gypsy Traps and Thieves. I can't. I can't. Oh, and you know I which can't. one else? You're, you know which one else? So you know which one else? Christmas for me. Father Figure. Why? Because because he says there's a lyric in Father Figure, that's all I wanted, but sometimes love can be mistaken for a crime. Mm-hmm. So they're alleging statutory rape. Oh, well, you know, it could also be polygamy. That's another crime. Anyway, here, here's my issue with all of this stuff. You can... Are you fucking kidding me? Half-breed is sung by a woman who is half, you know, one thing and half another. Okay. Here's my issue with all of this, and Whatever. I'm, you know, as our listeners know, and as you know, I'm, I'm very liberal, and I always give people the benefit of the doubt, especially Which is your people, biggest flaw. especially people that are a repressed, you know, group, because you know you can't, you can't expect the majority to have understanding or to really, you know, have a grasp of what a minority goes through. So sometimes you need loud voices within a minority group. Um, or a specific Fine. group of people to make their point. Um, and obviously the Me Too movement, how we have discussed here in our podcast many times before, is something that I wholeheartedly support and I think was needed. It's and, relevant. And it and had to necessary. happen. It's relevant because it, it's something that it's been coming for a long time and very well so. Yeah, but then and, you have shit like and, this. And, 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 I'm, I'm getting there. Um it's something that needed to happen. It needed to happen because we all know that women have to deal with things that men don't have to deal with, with especially white men of a certain financial position. We all know like that. Like princes. And, and that is, that is like, Eric. <laughs> like Eric. And that's something that needs to be brought to the forefront. And I think that this year it has been. And that is a good thing. The problem with now this, because this is like another layer. Mm. This is like another kind of, um, this is like a mutation, if you will, of the Me Too movement. The problem with this now is that this delegitimizes the Me Too movement. I agree. Because, I mean, you are attacking a Disney song. A Disney (laughs) song. I mean, you're now going to go back. It, it, It almost feels like... There's people who are now going back to everything, to every movie, oh, to absolutely. every song, to everything, to d- dissect. But we talked to about see, this a little bit when we talked about James Gunn with yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy. To, to see how we can criminalize this and how, you know, this is inappropriate. And again, 
intention and motive is very important in this conversation yes. and context. And as you said, you know, in this particular song, you know, what was the context? And also, I, I, I can't recall anybody being offended by this. And again, there's a lot of things, as, as I said, uh, being a James Bond fan, I can look back on you a lot it. of those movies and say like, okay, this is inappropriate. I, I could see how somebody would say that this is inappropriate. But I think that from a context, we could say, okay, but this is how far we've come. Right. That we are able to, as a society, say, okay, James, maybe the way that you treat pussy galore is not the best way that you should be treating a woman. You know, that doesn't mean you can't, you have to censor the movie right. because, you know, if that is the case, if we're going to start censoring, because that is what this is, Absolutely. it's censorship. If we're going to start censoring all these, all this content, right, mm -hmm. that may be deemed inappropriate, it's got, then how, how different is that from when we censor or we criticize other countries for censoring literature that doesn't go with the propaganda of the country? Yeah. You know, like Dr. Zhivago, one of my favorite novels, you know, was banned in Russia until the 90s, you know, because it didn't it didn't go and convey with the sentiment of the Russian government, uh, the Soviet Union. Right. You know, so how different is this, especially for content that, again, has a certain context of it and was written or performed in a different time? And I think that this really le delegitimizes the real cause of the me too movement and the real what it really is about because then now people that maybe mm -hmm. were a little bit like eh, now you've given them ammunition because it's like okay now you're even going to ban the little mermaid like right. what stupid shit is this so you know the founder of the me too movement which i oh my god i forgot her name she says that she doesn't recognize the movement from what it started and from what she intended really? and when i read that i thought well you know She's not wrong she no so, so can we talk about another movement that is uh, deeming that loves to just say shit that then becomes delegitimized? Well, that's not how I feel about the Me Too movement. No, 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 no. But, but I just think that you know some people, not the movement itself, some people because right. like this girl that wrote that article about the Little Mermaid, I don't think she is the voice Absolutely. of the Me Too movement. She's just somebody who is you know using the Me Too movement for her own platform and for her own you know. Well. I'm going to talk about a group that I've disliked for years. PETA. The People for Ethical Treatment of Animals. Oh, my God. Okay, what what did PETA do to piss you off? Well, I mean, anything. I you mean, know how I feel about PETA. I think they're necessary. Okay, but... okay. I, look, I, 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 I'm, I'm, not I'm, I'm not going to talk about my opinion. Tell I'm me, against me. cruelty to animals, okay. but I also think that they, they do it from this perspective of it's like all or nothing. Okay, wait, no, let, let's talk about what, what you're... So here's the headline. Bringing up. PETA says phrases like bring home the bacon <laughs> are comparable to racism and homophobia. <laughs> the article says meat-based idioms like, quote, flogging a dead horse or taking the bull by the horns can be compared with homophobic and racist language, according to animal rights organization PETA, just as it became unacceptable to use racist, homophobic, or ableist language, phrases that trivialize cruelty to animals will vanish okay. as more people begin to appreciate animals for who they are and start bringing home the bagels okay. instead of the bacon. Okay, I'm going to say why that's bullshit. First of all, first of all, I no, but I'm going to give a little bit of a legal <laughs> standpoint uh -huh. here. First of all, I, I want to make my position on what I feel about PETA. I don't agree with that statement that PETA made, and sometimes... I do think that a, some They're their things worst enemy. that they may have said or done in the past, I've been a little bit like uh, about, but I do, I do agree with PETA in terms of the organization because although they're very balls to the wall, right? It's a it's necessary to have a balls to the wall organization okay. like that because but the they problem, are their own worst enemy, right? But the the problem is that. Animal abuse was something that was so big in so many forms, in so many layers, in so many different types of way that it, it was a very strong issue to grapple. And most importantly, not only is it a strong issue to grapple in, in terms of policy and law, but most importantly for people's 
you know, thoughts on cruelty of animal of animals. Because, for example, when people think of cruelty, you know, to cruelty of, mm-hmm. to animals, they think of like um, dog fighting, or or they think they think of dog fighting, or they think of um, a, a cockfights, a, a cock or mm-hmm. um, bull runs, or, or, right, right. or things like that, or like Very an extreme, extreme abuse. Mm-hmm. But they don't think necessarily of, and this is something I've seen firsthand through my work um at one point they haven't seen you know um where they raise like chickens to be sold at you know like for purdue or cooking good or whatever Mm -hmm. um and those are very much animals that are also also suffer but so i i agree that sometimes they have to be balls to the wall where i find a false equivalency to what they're saying in that statement is that when you are talking about comparing a saying of an animal like bring home the bacon, grab mm-hmm. a bull by its horns. You, if you're making that argument and you want to make a, a sensible argument against those sayings, I don't think you should compare it against homophobia or sexism right. or whatever, because you're talking about human beings, that we are a protected class legally. You know, mm-hmm. legally human beings, uh, from, a, from a legal standpoint in the Supreme Court, we are a protected class. Right. So... So making that argument is not necessarily the best argument because from a legal standpoint, it doesn't fly. So you can't you can't say that racism and homophobia are on the same level as animal abuse. Not that animal abuse it should it's be tolerated, right, 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 right. should be tolerated in any way, but you're talking about human beings and people's lives. Um, and from a legal standpoint, that wouldn't fly. I would just make an argument if I were them that it's insensitive, you know, because right. because grab a bull by its horns, you know, the historical context of that is this, this, and this, and this, right. you know. So that's the way that that's I would. That's not going to get a headline. Well, no, that's not saying you know insensitive to animals isn't going to get you the headline. No, that. I mean that's how I would have handled it. Right. So. You know? They're so obnoxious. All I have to say to that is, you know what? I am going to grab the bull by the horns, and then I'm going to bring home the bacon. And when I get home, you know what I might do? What? I might spank the monkey. All right? I'm going to just take care of all the animals. Spank the monkey in that blacklist as well. <laughs> what blacklist? Of those things that you can't say or you shouldn't say or are insensitive? Probably. Well, you are spanking the monkey. You are spanking the monkey. And if we don't... una nalga mono. I know. I sound so different in Spanish. Voy a meterle una nalga... Al mono. It's all kinds of inappropriate. ¿Qué tú haces? Yo, mami, metiéndole una naga al mono. ¿Qué? ¿Qué mono tú tienes ahí? ¿Y por qué tú estás metiendo una naga al mono? Me meo. Hello, everyone. This is episode 44. Pero let me tell you. <laughs> uh, actually, I, I want to I wanna, um, just a little, little... Um, Go, because I guess I'm laughing. A little, little uh, <laughs> shout out. And now, you know, by the time this, this airs later this week, a Stephen Colbert, who I, I, I take or leave Stephen Colbert. I, right. Sometimes I think he's hilarious. Sometimes I'm like, blah. Um, he had a skit the other day where he went to the Butterball headquarters. Ooh. And you know the Butterball turkey? This was actually the week of Thanksgiving. Butterball turkey has a 1-800 hotline. Yeah. Okay, everybody knew this except me. I didn't know this. Yeah, people call on Thanksgiving. Anyway, p- people were calling, you know, obviously with questions on right. how to cook their turkey or about their turkey. And, you know, he was kind of laughing at it, mm-hmm. you know. And, and there were a bunch of callers that he did really funny stuff with. But there was this one caller in particular that he was like, the, the caller had these questions on the turkey and he was and he was pretending that they were landing at O'Hare Airport. And he's like, Delta Flight 053, you are cleared to land at O'Hare. Delta Flight 053. I don't know. To our listeners out there, look up Stephen Colbert Butterball uh, Turkey Hotline um, and find it on YouTube. It's freaking hilarious. You'll enjoy it. So, um, yep. so we've got a fantastic, speaking of cooking. Yes. We have Kevin Curry, who some of you out there may know on Instagram as Fit Men Cook. See, he just released this week a cookbook collecting all of his recipes that he posts on Instagram, not just in English but and Spanish as well. And actually, he was just a really sweet guy. Um, he's met Oprah, everybody. He's met Oprah. He's met Oprah. I mean, we talked to on. somebody who's met Oprah. But um, this week saw the launch of his his cookbook and. He also has a dish in the New York area, Panera Breads. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and his recipes are awesome. Um, we'll put the link on our on our um, Instagram to his um, 
to his own Instagram and his own yep. web page that has a bunch of recipes and meal prep stuff and the stuff is delicious we've tried it out ourselves yeah, and especially now que todo el mundo está de comelada y atándose de you know Everything. Bacon, bacon. <laughs> bacon. They're bringing home the bacon. You know, when all that is over, we're going to need some sensible eating. So yep. this is a, a good time for this. Yep. So enjoy our chat with Kevin Curry. Hey, Caballero, you know if there's one thing we love here at but let me tell you, it's tradition. And what better way to keep that tradition going than with some cigars from our friends at Tres Lindas Cubanas. That's right, you heard them on our show here recently. These ladies are offering you a fantastic opportunity to get a cigar holiday gift pack that you can order online, free shipping, and if you use the code BETTLELETME, you get a free gift with every purchase. As you probably heard on our interview with these ladies, these cigars are high quality, the epitome of urban sophistication, and it's a company from two Afro-Cuban twin sisters, okay? Hello, representa la gente, right? So go to treslindascubanas.com today and order your holiday gift. It's perfect. You know what? Not just for a gift. Get it for yourself. Come on, what are you waiting for? You know you want to. And don't forget to use the promo code Pero Let Me to get a free gift with every purchase. Welcome back, listeners. So as we told you, we are here with... Fit Men Cook, Kevin Curry. Welcome to the podcast, sir. Welcome to Thank Pero you so Let much. Me Tell You. What's going on, homies? How you doing? <laughs> well, we're in a good spot today because unlike most of the country, we're not under snow. So we're... <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm in Dallas right now and it is a brilliantly sunny day and it's about 65. So we're right in between the stage of like, all right, this is cool enough, but we can also... It's just cold enough that we can actually wear some trendy winter clothes <laughs> yeah it's cool it's cool here today it's, it's just it's, cold enough <laughs> it's it's fall weather here in miami today which yeah. is kind of odd but but we as as you in dallas we enjoy it when we can <laughs> right right uh, so um you know as as i kind of mentioned i gotta know, ask oh, just one quick question go ahead you started which one of you was dressed up as like the comic book person um in, in the blue that I, i've, I've would been be trying me. to place i'm like which comic book character is that <laughs> that would be me uh that was nightwing that i was doing cosplay nightwing. yeah yeah it's my favorite okay. superhero yep and i would be the right. other guy who was not in cosplay <laughs> <laughs> yeah i because i didn't see yeah there was just one but then there was a robin but that's not you though no 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 no, no 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 there was a picture that's why uh, there was a post that we put that I we we typed um, one of us is out of our element that uh, that would be me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I love it. I love it. Yeah. So, but it's, but, so okay, are you are you a comic book fan? Uh, you know what? Yes, but let me just put a huge asterisk by that. <laughs> I'm not like one of those. I've never been to Comic Con. You know, okay. I used to say say that I'm a gamer until I actually met a real gamer, and I'm like, I gotta stop saying that. I like <laughs> video games, so I'm not gonna go out there and say I'm. A, I just I like comic books and I like the movies, but okay. I, I'm not I'm not a, as advanced as you are. Okay, yeah. all right, fair enough. It's, fair a, enough. it's a lifestyle. <laughs> Yo, but, totally. Like but, I see, I'll be flipping through my Instagram feed. And I'm like, huh, why is he dressed up as something? I'm like, it's not even Halloween. But no, <laughs> exactly. these things happen throughout the year. Oh, yeah. Um, people are really into it. Halloween's when they take a break. Yeah. <laughs> so speaking of lifestyles, <laughs> um, obviously. Yeah. How's that for a transition? Speaking of lifestyles. <laughs> your lifestyle in terms of, you know, you being very fit and going to the gym and, and you know, all about what you eat um, is is something that nowadays, you know, meal prep and, and I believe going to the gym and being fit is more popular than ever. So tell us a little bit about, you know, exactly who you yeah, are yeah. And, and what you do and Your how journey. all this started. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I will give you the Cliff Notes version. The abbreviated Cliff, Cliff Notes version um, started back in 2009, 2010 was my, when I really got serious about my fitness journey. Mm -hmm. Like many people, I was um, trying to out-train a poor diet. And, uh, you know, growing up here in the South, I've got the soul food plus I live in Texas, so I've also Ooh, got a barbecue. huge influence of Mexican food. So I know. So you got barbecue, you got soul food, and you got Mexican food. I mean, I just – if there's – like I just can't win. Like there's <laughs> always good food, food around me. And I was at this point I was just really trying just to outrun, outlift, outdo everything. 
but it just always came back to food. So I, I went to um, a bookstore and started to buy a whole bunch of books about nutrition because I got tired of ballooning in my mm-hmm. in my um, in my wellness journey. Meaning, I'd go from periods of being super skinny because I would just run a whole lot to being right. extremely overweight just because I love the taste of food. Um, and I just came to the conclusion like it really shouldn't be this way. We've got this we've got this whole entire planet. We've got these amazing cuisines um, across the world and these amazing foods. I don't think that we should be that we should have to exclude that. I just think that we just need to have a better approach to it. So that's what I did. And my approach was um, just to post every single meal that I was eating online. And the goal here was not actually to build community, but actually just to get ideas. Oh, so you <laughs> were just like out just, crowdsourcing. <laughs> oh, that's what I call it. I was, I was trying to crowdsource my diet. Uh, okay. <laughs> because, you know, and it, it was a great, it was a great hustle, right? Because I, I got it. So backing up further, there was this trainer who was who wanted to charge me some insanely um, amount of money for four weeks of training. And I'm like, no, man, if you could figure it out, I could do the same thing. So right. that's why I went to, to this bookstore and began to read about nutrition because not only was it affecting me and my health, but it was also hitting my wallet. Yeah. Well, so, I think that's a very common, a very common, I'm going to say complaint that people say is like, yeah. oh, but it's, it's so expensive to eat healthy. Oh, the gym is, you know, it's too much to get a trainer. It's, you know, it's price, yeah. price, price. And that's one actually one of the things that I love about your you know your approach which again i've i've tried one or two of your recipes so i i'm speaking with a degree of of expertise um <laughs> it doesn't break the bank and i think that's the most important yeah. thing that I, I appreciate that you're trying to convey which is to say you can eat healthy and not have to you know pull in an eight figure salary you know it's oh god it, yeah it, it's just about being smarter with your choices absolutely and that's what i had to do I just became smarter with my choices, taught myself how to cook, and then my account just kind of like took off from there because there are people out there like me and you and um, that were just tired of this boring, bland food and just wanted some flavor, but you don't want to have to break the bank to do it, and you also don't want to have to be a culinary chef to put a meal together right. on neither of those things. Actually, something <laughs> that you said that really... Well, some would argue with you because those meals look fantastic. Something you said that really um, caught my attention just now is that you mentioned that you were trying to out train your diet because I feel that that Mm -hmm. is, that is something so many of us, including myself, um, kind of fall that yes, we go to the gym, we train like hell, we power lift, we do all these things where, Mm -hmm. you know, we come out of the gym drenched in sweat, but you know, a couple of hours later we're having McDonald's. So, um, what did you find that were you having as you said those same pitfalls that you were just very active physically but you weren't reaching your fitness goals um, or consistency because of your diet absolutely I mean like you nailed it we do all these things and for me it was that I was getting up at 5am to go to spin class and then after work I would go back to the gym and do weights and then cardio for about two hours I did that for three Mm -hmm. hours a day for five days a week for about a good year. And it wasn't until I did a side-by-side picture. I mean, like, fool, you look the exact same. <laughs> <laughs> and you're killing yourself and you're tired. <laughs> yeah, the only thing that's changed is your brand new iPhone. That is the only thing that's changed in this picture. <laughs> so I had to, it was like, I, I was confronted with that truth. It was staring at me right in the face. Um, and that's what we all try to do because it's easier to do that. It's easier to go and try to run something off and try to get really active mm-hmm. instead of um, really practicing a lot more self-control. Well, it's an easier fix. portion control. Yeah, it's, an e- it's much an easier, easier fix. fix. So Absolutely. I don't blame people for that because we all do that. Yeah. Now, something that you mentioned, and, and I love this quote on your on your website, is our bodies are built in the kitchen, sculpted in the gym. Now, I say that because I know that you've been posting, you know, your recipes, you have your app, um, but you've got a cookbook coming out. When this airs, it'll actually have come out this week, I think December 4th, is yeah. that when it's coming out? How did how did that come about? Was it just like a natural progression or was it something that, you know, you felt, huh, maybe, you know, I've, I've got a little bit more that I can contribute that a book can do that, you know, social media maybe can't? Yeah, you know, the... The book is something that I've just been um, writing for quite some time, actually. I didn't really know that I was writing it, but 
the narrative of Fit Man Cook is really just kind of captured in this book in that I'm taking all the lessons that I've learned within my own health and wellness journey about how to get started, how to stay on track, how to how to maintain, um, how to do goal-based dieting, and also some of the things that I've heard from my followers about how they can achieve all of their wellness goals, how they stay committed to them, the pitfalls that they kind of fall into, and capturing that into one book. So I'm really proud of this new book. I'm really excited about it because it's something that's been in the works. I didn't know that it was in the works. And it's funny <laughs> because people have pushed me for so long to, to put out a book. And I, I I feel like sometimes I'm too thoughtful for my own good and since like I'm overthinking it. Right. But I think now was the right time for me to release that because now after doing this for what, like close to six years, I have a I have a solid point of view. And I will, you can put me in front of anyone and I will debate you down because not only do I know <laughs> some of the facts about the food, but I also just have the thing that maybe others don't, which is experience. Yeah, <laughs> I hey, fall don't knock experience. <laughs> yeah, I fall on my face enough to know, all right, this is not going to work. <laughs> right. no, that's, so, so that's fair. What, what would yeah. you say, though, to somebody who's <laughs> listening right now and – you know, um, and there's so many people who fall in this category that they want to do eat healthy, they want to go to the gym, but either they don't have the education to do so, they kind of don't know where to start. I mean, I, I, I see people in the gym that they're there and they look like they're lost in like right. the forest. Well, I think I think the natural mm -hmm. first step is going to Fit Men Cook and get the app because right. it's got fitness routines. <laughs> so that's that's a I'm I'm going to answer that one for you, Kevin. Well, but but in terms of you know like motivation, like what would you say to that? person who just because because a lot of times there's so much information out there there's so many fitness books there's so many you know recipe books there's so much that it could be a little bit overwhelming at times and then you see people that are in such great shape and you're like i'm never gonna get there so what would you say uh -huh. to that person who's kind of like keeps thinking about it but just doesn't do it how to overcome your inner saboteur as it were right i like that question and when you're taught when you ask me that question i i try to answer it now as like past me and what worked for me so what what i did was i took a huge step back and it's easy to look at diet and wellness overall like as your end goal because you see how you want to look and you you see mm -hmm. where like you want to be but really you can't approach it like that you've got to approach it day by day moment by moment so mm. what I did was, first off, to that person who feels lost in the gym, I joined a gym that had an actual workout class. So I would, when, and this is, this is why I talk about, too, you got to have the right mindset. You got to be actually ready for this. When I did it, I was ready. So how I started out was I started out doing that Nike training club, and it was like 80% women in there, and I was the only dude, and I was being the back of the class because I was huffing and puffing just tying my shoes, you know, wow. um, and I started there. Um, and then, you know, that led to other ideas. I found different websites that I could go to and I said, Oh, okay. You can actually download a full workout here. Didn't know I could do that. Okay. <laughs> let me watch some of these tutorials online and figure out what I'm doing, you know? Um, and then through that experience, you, you also meet people, um, in those classes mm -hmm. so I could find like a workout partner to go and do something. Um, so there are small things that you could do when, um, in terms of just finding out how to get physically active, but just, just start. Um, and, and you know, if you can find some type of organized structure for you to go and do that, then do that. If not, just keep it really simple. Don't overthink it. You are going to go today to the gym for the first time in forever. And you're going to walk on the treadmill. I am so proud of you for doing that. Yeah. I, I Get agree. your confidence up that way. Just don't look at this like I've got to go here and do a two hour workout. Mm -mm -mm. We're yeah. just happy that you showed up today. Yeah. Um, um, I, I agree with you 100%. Go ahead. Yeah. And then past me would also, well, well, present me would tell past me also, don't try to overhaul your diet overnight. Just start with one change. Just start mm -hmm. with one change. And as much as possible because the benefit of social media is that there's so much information out there and the tragedy of social media is that there's so much information out there <laughs> and that you don't know what to pick and choose. So that's why I say if you just think of one, what's one healthier hack that you can make for yourself to do just this week, just one thing that you can change. If that says, you know what, I'm going to limit my sodas. I've been drinking sodas every single day. I drink about three sodas a day. I'm going to go 
through this week and only drink one soda per day. Right. Right. Do that. Yeah. Baby steps. I'm going to yeah. drink a lot more. Yeah, baby steps. And you back your way into it. You kind of I, – I call this accelerating success. Whenever you can do something, just one small thing, you're like, okay, that felt really good. I, I can't believe I did that. I can do that. All right, cool. Well, let me yeah. add in something else. Yeah, because if you okay, start let too me big, add in something else. If you start too yeah. big, you're going to set yourself up for failure almost. You know, something I, I, I want to – I want to yeah. – kind of pick your brain on which i i since you're you know you're you're the expert you're the person we want to ask this to um obviously the recipes in in your um page are i mean they're amazing and we're we're obviously going to post this on our instagram page and I the links the and all that bark it was I, delicious I, I have to tell you the the picture the quality of like the pictures you have are amazing um, oh, thank you. <laughs> everything is like so well put. And, and again, our, our, our listeners, fitmencook.com, um, on, on top of finding a lot of, of info there, you're going to find great pictures of like his recipes and what he eats and all that. It's it's absolutely fantastic. But going with what di- with, you know, the issue of diet and what I specifically want to ask you and pick your brain on is, you know, there's so many diet fads. Like right now, I feel everybody's. Mm-hmm all on what is it the keto diet <laughs> yeah it's all about yeah. the keto diet which as I, I don't know from what i know about the keto diet it's like another form of atkins which is high protein low carb and as i always say people that subscribe to that it's like yeah you could eat a pound of bacon but don't eat the apple because the apple is <laughs> you know what yeah. would you say to those fad diets and and those you know those uh, you know eating habits that people just obtain and yeah they lose weight but how successful are they in the long run yeah so um i've tried keto out but i i you know i'll save my comments for keto separately from the question about the <laughs> fad diets what i'll say about that is you've got to be you it's okay to try different diets in fact i encourage people to to go and if you want to bounce around and you want to try paleo for a couple months, you want to try the whole thirty. You want to try keto at one at one point too. The the goal of I think trying these different diets out is to get ideas for your regular diet, because at the end of the day, you can be on a restrictive diet because it's the popular thing to go ahead and do right now. But at some point, very soon, you're gonna crave something and you're gonna want something that is not on your your list of foods that you can eat because you're on the super restrictive diet that's why i really preach trying to find a diet that's right for you in terms of building up a lifestyle but it's not bad to try out those diets the um the bad thing too about some of the fad diets whenever you do them they can lead to unintentional or subconscious binging right afterwards because you are rushing to get all this flavor that you feel that you've been missed oftentimes too depending on what type of diet you're on they could deprive you of different nutrients so you are so you're just craving sweets you're craving salty foods you're craving the you know the feeling of being satisfied through fat and that stuff can snowball out of control whenever you transition from one of those fad diets the goal here is not to fear food the goal is to enjoy and embrace food but enjoy and embrace it in the right portions and in a much more calorie conscious and nutritious way that's the end that's the end goal here you know, you're free to try out the fads and the, and the trendy diets, but I don't think that building building a lifestyle around those fads, that's going to end up being a lot more problematic and a lot more challenging for you. Okay, that's fair. I think it's, you know, everybody's different, but it's, you know, you got to think longer term, I think, is the, the bottom yeah, line. Yeah, you, you know, you have to think longer term, and, and it's not going to work out for everybody. So if you, yeah. I mean, it's fine to try those things, but if you're like, this is my new lifestyle, okay. Let's not go that far. Yeah. This is your new lifestyle <laughs> for the next couple of months. Let's go and be honest. Because yeah. as soon as yeah. Thanksgiving comes around, <laughs> all of a sudden you're not keto anymore. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought you were. This keto this. I, and I let like me tell you, nobody that. wants to come to your keto Thanksgiving anymore. No, that's when you switch to the pilgrim <laughs> diet. That's there, what there's no cornbread in the uh, no stuffing in the Thanksgiving keto di- <laughs> dinner. <laughs> so, another thing I wanted right. to to, to pivot over is you, you talk about a lot a lot about um, you know embracing flavor and and mm-hmm. you know things of that nature um, obviously as two Cuban American guys here in Miami we know a thing or two about you know cooking with a lot of seasoning and flavors and things like that um, but what I noticed is that on your Instagram page all of your recipes 
are in English and in Spanish, um, as well as your website is in Spanish as well. And as far as I know, I don't believe you're Hispanic. So what kind of led you to, to, to kind of have that aha moment where you're like, I'm going to include this element because this is, you know, this is an audience that is that is asking for it or, you know, did it even come out that way? Yeah, the um, first of all, I used to live in Ecuador um, for a little bit. I took some time off in college oh. and went there to travel and work. And I worked in a restaurant. How it's long? A funny thing. Um, it's about a year. Um, okay. I, I just took time off from school just to go and do that. And I worked in a restaurant. I went to a language school so I could, you know, like know how I could like communicate. And just fell in love with the with the culture there and I realized that I mean Latin cultures are very prevalent there's tons of different ones and um, yeah so I'm in there and I'm teaching these hip-hop dance classes and people are listening to me because uh, I'm black in America you know <laughs> black from America and carries they, they weight. I know what I'm talking about <laughs> yeah it carries weight you know it has some clout yeah um, <laughs> so it was a really cool experience also what that taught me was just an appreciation just for a deeper appreciation for different cultures and being as inclusive as possible and so when it came to this message of health and wellness, especially growing up here in Texas, um, and again, my primary diet was just like soul foods, southern food, and also Mexican food. I wanted the message of health and wellness to be as pervasive as possible. And when you look at the rates of diabetes and heart disease and really big just health conditions, they are extremely prevalent um, in the black and brown communities. Um, and I wanted to make sure that it wasn't lost on that and having a lot of friends whose parents you know uh Perfected, didn't know yeah. they grew up like i did just in a different culture they didn't know about calorie conscious cooking and so they grew up we grew up with uh, really high fatty foods yeah um and i just wanted to make sure that the message that i was sending out can reach as many people as possible and it just one of the joys that just i it's just hard to really put into words when I get messages from people and they say, hey, you know what? I love your recipes. I was I send them to my mom who doesn't speak any English and <laughs> she falls along and she loves you, you know, Aww. and she loves the fact that you say boom after the recipe. I just think it's kind of cute, right? <laughs> but, it, but just the fact that, you know, I, I love that message that, you know, even with our different backgrounds, um, even with our different experiences that we can connect on one thing and that is we all want to live healthier and happier yeah. lives yeah and food is such um, a connector and, oh absolutely people food yeah, brings us yeah. together yeah which this is goes back to the question that you asked me earlier about fad diets which is why I want to be I, I also forgot to say this about fad diets is one thing you have to be careful is that the element of food is so amazing food brings us together and it's a way to unite us across different things that we that that would divide us gender religion sexual orientation all those things the food connects us and whenever you get on these restrictive diets in the name of abs in the name of looking good for instagram yeah. what you also do is you cut out the element of social um things that happen around food mm -hmm. yeah. you can't go out to eat because well i'm on keto right now okay well that's your own fault bro <laughs> yeah we're gonna go out to eat we're gonna right. enjoy ourselves yeah. Oh, yeah. I can't go out and eat right now because I'm fasting. Okay, I get that you love to do that, and that's fine, but you miss out on those things. So yeah. I want people to find a diet that complements their overall lifestyle. If you like hanging out with friends and you enjoy socializing, then don't pick a restrictive diet like that. Yeah. You've got to find a way to get to your healthier and happier you that actually complements your lifestyle, not complicates it. Yeah, yes. that's probably why you and I don't fast. No, <laughs> no, but actually, you know what? I'm. I think I'm gonna take the Kevin Curry challenge. <laughs> I think I'm gonna like. I don't know. I'm gonna. Let's I'm go gonna figure it. out how to do it. Like we should do it. We should we totally should do, do it. it. When right, like the week before this episode airs, we should do like a week of just his recipes and you know, p right. post it online. But, but you're the better cook. So yes, can I you, can I just give you the Tupperware <laughs> and you can make it? Uh, we'll we'll figure it we'll out. We'll figure that out. Okay. <laughs> All right. So Boom. Kevin, I know your time is very limited, and uh, and again, I want to bring it back to. I know you have your your cookbook coming out this week. Thank you so much. But before we let you go, I know you've gotten the opportunity to travel a lot and meet a lot of interesting people. But I would be very remiss if I did not bring up what was Oprah like. Wow. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oprah is amazing. I mean, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm the worst type of fan, too, because I'm the fan that actually fanboys out. 
that's, like, I'm, I'm that, that guy. Yeah, I'm that guy too. Yeah, so. I'm that guy. I'm like, oh my god, I don't care who you are. I'm like, I'm gonna <laughs> fanboy out. And I was like that. I was, I that smile that you saw on my face. That was the best that I could do. And the crazy thing too is that like I wanted just to like she she put her arm around me and wow. I kind of like tried to put my arm around her and I'm doing it <laughs> at the same time though. What you all can't see is that there is this security guy that is, uh. <laughs> they're taking a the photo. They're like, y'all smile and do something cute and funny. But he is looking at me like, please try it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, yeah, yeah. please, please let me show Oprah why she hired me right now. <laughs> <laughs> so she could touch you, but you right, can't touch right. her. <laughs> yeah. So just please, please make my day, sir. And I'm like, okay, Kevin, just just <laughs> smile. But also don't don't let the enthusiasm let's turn this into a tragedy and you end up on the shame room oh, <laughs> yeah. no, no 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 that's awesome that's uh, awesome all right, well. so kevin thank you so much for um being on pero let me tell you um yep. this was a good talk with a lot of insightful information yep and again thank you so much for having me you know, listeners fit men cook the cookbook uh by the time you hear this it'll actually be out and you know i know around end of years when people are starting to look at new year's resolutions so what better way to get yourself in line than you know with with this fantastic book of recipes that you can make at home and, and everything not looks difficult. so good at least on the web page everything is like man that's what i want to eat now yeah. <laughs> so absolutely so thank you so much uh for being again on our show we really appreciate it and all the best to you and best yep. of luck with your book and all your endeavors absolutely thank you all so much i appreciate it and we're back well welcome back everyone yes that was a fantastic interview with kevin ahora todo el mundo you uh, sabe a poner esa dieta yes go get his book it's available in all fine and non-fine retailers right now and you know what I think it'd make a great Christmas gift. And as, he, and as he said, you know, it's not so much about dieting because dieting is like a dirty word. It's about it's just making healthier like, choices. choices and being a little you bit smart about it. You can have a piece it. of cake, not a whole sheet cake. Yeah, that's the problem, especially um, ones from Publix. Publix. Yeah. yeah, so anyway, <laughs> moving on to our thirsty, our last sodas yes, of the desert and keeping in our holiday now, I guess, tradition that we're going to yes. um, give it to we're having traditions. noble causes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give my last soda this week to um, Habitat for Humanity. I've worked with them and volunteered with them before. Obviously, I, most of our listeners probably know what they do. I would hope. Um, that they, uh, people volunteer and they build houses for people that are uh, disadvantaged, people that are low income, people that basically are probably never going to have the chance financially to own a home and this is a great program and the wonderful thing about Habitat for Humanity and what I invite people to volunteer for is that when you see these houses being built and you see these people moving in it, it really gives you a real life sense of the impact that that your you know efforts are having in these people's lives so again I can't I can't stress it enough how important it is and how that the well that organization does so habitat for humanity you got a coke fantastic and actually it's funny because i'm kind of on a similar note uh i'm going to give my last soda to b as in boy rc brc they are a homeless organization in new york um Disclaimer, a friend of ours actually works in their volunteer department. He's the head of the, the volunteer area, and I've actually done some stuff for them in the past. And the beauty of, of them is that they don't just help the homeless. They actually help people get off the street, have a temporary housing, learn skills, get their life together. And my favorite part of the whole thing is that they call all of these people that they help clients oh nice so you know they don't call them like oh yeah the you know the homeless the people they it, they treat them with respect and dignity right. and that's something that definitely should you know always be at the forefront of any charity and i think that the brc is very exemplary in that um you can of course go to brc.org or they are actually since it's christmas and everybody's buying stuff through amazon if you go through amazon smile mm -hmm. you can actually find brc and you can um have them be designated as your charity that gets a portion of of wow. the sales that you make look at that awesome awesome yeah. bueno that was nice yeah so uh, again we hope everybody's having a wonderful holiday season enjoy it because before you know it it's january, january 1st. and here we go again yep. and um as always we hope you listen laughed and learned and remember to grab your pastelito, your croqueta, and your jupiña. And thank you so much for joining us. Bye, mi gente. Bye. Let's get physical, physical.